I have a massive issue with the Ninth Doctor. One that I will never truly be able to look past. He only had one season. I think that that is a true crime against storytelling. <laughs> Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor is what ushered in the new age of Doctor Who, bringing the sci-fi show to a new generation of people while still paying homage and respect to the massive history of the show that started back in 1963. His Doctor was much more rugged and kind of relatable in a way, sporting his natural northern accent as he blasted around the universe in his iconic leather jacket. Unfortunately, Eccleston left the show after only 13 episodes due to things happening behind the screen, on-set relationships and dynamics, which I think is a real shame. I love The Ninth Doctor's run. I remember watching it on TV with my family when I was in primary school. It's what made me fall in love with the show's world, characters, and monsters. And so, for this video, I wanted to look back at my favorite scene of The Ninth Doctor, diving into why I think it's so good to highlight how brilliantly Eccleston inhabits The Doctor. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you like more content like this. And I'd love to know your favorite Ninth Doctor scene in the comments down below. By nature of Eccleston having a short run as the Doctor, there are nowhere near as many moments to pick from when compared to Tennant, Smith, Capaldi, or even Jodie Whittaker. Those actors all had three seasons as the Doctor, opposed to Eccleston's one. But regardless of this, there are still many amazing moments to pick from. Whether that be the Everybody Lives scene from The Doctor Dances. Everybody lives, Rose. Just this one. Everybody lives. Or his response to Rose when she asks who he is. Tell me, who are you? Do you know like we were saying about the Earth revolving? I can feel it. The turn of the Earth. The ground beneath our feet is spinning at a thousand miles an hour and the entire planet is hurtling around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour, and I can feel it. We're falling through space, you and me. That's who I am. Now forget me, Rose Tyler. Eccleston brings this dark, rough, and mysterious edge to the Doctor, whilst also finding the joy and wonder in the small things, having a slightly goofier, cheeky side to his character. Honestly, this scene between Rose and the Doctor in the first episode is massively slept on. It's such a great scene, and the way that Eccleston performs this little monologue, like, damn, it, it, it's a big contender for one of my favorite moments from his whole run. But there is one scene that I will keep on coming back to. You might be thinking, ah, oh, it's the scene where the Doctor meets the Dalek for the first time in the episode, Dalek. And that's not a bad guess, because it is an amazing scene but it's actually not the one I've picked. If you want to hear me talk about that scene and that episode as a whole, then go check out this video after you've watched this one. My favorite scene in Eccleston's run takes place at the very end of the episode, Bad Wolf. After a brilliant episode of repurposing British TV shows, turning them into the deadly versions of themselves, we follow the Doctor as he makes his way through Satellite 5, working his way up to the top to uncover the secret as to who is behind it all. We find out before the Doctor, though, that it's the Daleks that have been hidden in space, amassing a fleet, rebuilding themselves so they can conquer the universe. They have captured Rose, and the Doctor is looking for her. This leads us into this scene. Captain Jack, the Doctor, and the staff of Satellite 5 find the area of space where this hidden transmission is. Someone's been playing a long game, controlling the human race from behind the scenes for generations. Look on this. The transmat delivers to that point, right on the edge of the solar system. The Doctor cancels out the signal that's hiding this mysterious force, and as he looks up, he sees his worst fear. As soon as he sees the ships, his gaze locks in place. He is still. He sits there, trying to rationalize what he is seeing, getting over his shock and probably fear. He doesn't move his head or his eyes. He is fixed to the screen. That's impossible. I know those ships. They were destroyed. Obviously, they survived. The way he delivers this line, low and quiet, defeated. This is a huge moment for the Doctor. When he met the lone Dalek earlier on in this season, he knew that to be the last survivor. 
It even said as such, one Time Lord, one Dalek survived. And that Dalek died. From what he knew, his actions in the Time War, as heinous as they were, they worked. He believed it to have been a successful act, destroying the Daleks once and for all. But here, right now, there is a whole fleet, thousands and thousands of them. We see in this moment his realization that he destroyed the Time Lords. He destroyed his home for nothing. 200 ships, more than 2,000 on board each one. That's just about half a million of them. Half a million what? Daleks. He is so matter of fact here. He doesn't have the energy to muster any other kind of response here. He's still processing what he's seeing. But as soon as the Daleks contact him, you can see him physically shift himself, rolling his shoulders back, getting himself ready to talk to the enemy. Also notice the look on his face, an utter distaste at the sight of the Daleks. I will talk to the doctor. Oh, will you? That's nice. Hello. The Dalek stratagem fears completion. Some classic Ninth Doctor cheeky sarcasm here, trying to stay cool and collected, but his forced smile quickly fades. The fleet is almost ready. You will not intervene. Oh, really? Why is that then? The delivery of this line is so matter of fact intimidating even, as if to say, what could possibly stop me from getting involved and destroying you? His head is held high, as if to look imposing, giving off the air of someone who won't back down. We have your associate. The Daleks play their hand straight away, threatening Rose. This visibly affects the Doctor. His head moves, he shifts away from his imposing posture, as if this has stumped him, made him worry a bit. You will obey or she will be exterminated. No. But then he comes in with the most defiant answer that he could possibly give. Everyone looks at him, the music kicks in as he defies the Daleks. I love how with one word the Daleks get completely thrown. It shows their underlying fear of the Doctor. They don't know what he's going to do and that scares them. Explain yourself. I said no. What is the meaning of this negative? It means no. I love how each time the Doctor says no, it, it builds, slowly getting more passionate and emotional, until this. She will be destroyed. No. He stands up, ready to face down the Daleks, launching into a speech filled with hope, passion, fueled by his care for Rose, his love for her. I think that people often think it was the 10th Doctor who fell in love with Rose, but his feelings for her actually started back with the 9th Doctor, and we can see that coming through here. But it's not just that. You can also see his hatred for the Daleks spill out of him towards the end of this speech. Because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rescue her. I'm going to save Rose Tyler from the middle of the Dalek fleet, and then I'm going to save the Earth, and then, just to finish off, I'm going to wipe every last stinking Dalek out of the sky! But you have no weapons, no defenses, no plan! Yeah. And doesn't that scare you to death? I absolutely love that line. It shows the Doctor's knowledge of the Daleks, the knowledge of his own prowess. He doesn't need a plan to defeat them, and the Daleks know that. If anything, it's what they fear most. They fear the unknown, and that is exactly what the Doctor is. Look how he smiles. He actually seems to be enjoying it, toying with them. And then he addresses his companion. Rose? Yes, Doctor? I'm coming to get you. Consoling her giving her hope that he will save her, but also kind of being a bit of a badass about it, just cutting off the call with his screwdriver, as if to say, I'm done talking to you now. Fear me, Daleks, I'm coming for you. All of this is happening whilst the music is building, the choir of voices growing in strength in a triumphant cacophony of noise, the camera shifting from close-ups of the Doctor's face to the Daleks to show their connection, that this is the Doctor's fight, his call to war. And then, after the Doctor stops this call, you see the Daleks start to mobilise around Rose. We zoom out to see a whole legion of Daleks, more than we've ever seen before, all chanting their iconic death scream before we hit the next time screen. What a way to finish off your penultimate episode. Like, what a cliffhanger. I absolutely love this scene. 
It encapsulates the Ninth Doctor so well. You see the Doctor's darkness, glimpses of the War Doctor, his sadness, his sense of defeat as he sees that the Daleks have survived, but the Time Lords have not. You see his courage to stand up against the Daleks, his cheekiness and sarcasm, not really treating them with any respect whatsoever, but ultimately you see his care for Rose. It's such a well executed scene in pretty much every way, and it still gives me chills to this day. I really want the Ninth Doctor to come back. He nearly did for the 50th anniversary, but Eccleston didn't think it was right for him or his character. I really hope that they can figure out a way that makes sense and that works for him to get the Ninth Doctor back at some point in the future. He did such a wonderful job with the role and it really was a shame that he only got one season. But until then, we have scenes like this to remind us of what a great Doctor he was, to remind us that he really was fantastic thanks for watching guys don't forget to go check out my other videos i've got quite a few doctor who videos but also lots of videos on various other topics don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below it really helps the algorithm and i'll see you all on the next one bye